Hey guys, it's James here. Spring is here in Toronto, Canada, and I'm actually moving to a new studio soon, so I'm super excited about that. This is actually going to be the last video you see me filming here. I'll be posting a couple of videos on me setting up a new studio in the future, so be sure to subscribe if you want to see them. But today, I want to give some recording advice for guitarists and bassists. As an audio engineer who does mostly remote mixing, I've worked with many guitarists and bassists who were skillful at their instruments but were unable to give me the best possible recordings for mixing because they just didn't have sufficient knowledge on the audio engineering side of things. So in this video, I'm going to lay out some recording advice and best practices for guitars and basses who are recording themselves at home. One of the most common mistakes I see musicians make is buying a cheap interface like the Focusrite Scarlett and they wonder why their recordings don't sound as good as they wish them to be. The most important thing you need to understand here is the analog to digital and digital to analog converter, aka the AD DA converter in an audio interface. To put things in simple terms, when you are recording, your guitar will output electrical signals, which are analog. These analog signals will reach the interface through the cable and the interface will convert them into digital signals so your computer can read and record them. This means that the electrical signals have now become zeros and ones because they are now digital. Similarly, when you are playing back something on your DAW, like listening to your demos, your computer will output digital signals, which the audio interface will convert into electrical signals and send them to your speakers or headphones so they can produce sounds. Think of the audio interface as an interpreter who translates analog signals for the computer and digital signals for headphones and speakers. Now think about what happens if the interpreter is not very good at translating. Your guitar may have the best pickups in the world, but with a cheap interface, because of the inferior analog to digital conversion, perhaps only 60% of the signals from your guitar is properly converted. Similarly, you may have the best studio monitors in the world, but a cheap interface with inferior digital to analog conversion will not properly convert the uh, digital signals. So what you're hearing is actually a shittier version of what you have in your DAW. This is why many people say it's like a blanket was taken off of my monitors after they upgraded from a cheap interface to a much better one. So the interface is super key for getting better recording quality and hearing the DAW playback better. If you have a cheap interface, I always recommend upgrading the interface first before upgrading any other parts of your recording chain or the studio monitors. Otherwise, it makes no sense to use a $4,000 guitar with a Scarlett interface, for example. Now you may ask, well, I don't have a big budget. What good interfaces can I get? The good news is good interfaces don't actually cost that much more than a typical Scarlett. For example, uh, Audion have always had pro level interfaces and their cheapest one, ID4, is only 200 US dollars, which is about 30 bucks more than the very popular Scarlett 2i2. You might as well shell out 30 more dollars and get the ID4. The ID4 has a very good instrument input, ADDA converter, and even a great microphone preamp. For a hundred more dollars, you can get the SSL2 interface by Solid State Logic. If you have a bit more money to spare, the Universal Audio Apollo Solo and Focusrite Claret 2 Pre are both great choices. If you have $1,000 to spare, you can get the RME Babyface Pro, which is what I use and I think a bit overkill for guitarists just recording guitars. I think for this price, it provides more value to audio engineers who do recording, mixing, and mastering because RME's converters are really good. But if you have the money, go for it. A question I've been asked many times by guitarists is, do I need a DI box? Well, it depends on a couple of things. First is that, what kind of interface do you have right now? If you have a cheap one like the Scarlett, I would say just save up for a better interface because a good DI box can be expensive and you won't get the most value of it due to the inferior uh, converter in your interface. Now, if you already have a good interface, 
then getting a DI box is less about improving the recording quality, but more about adding more flavors to your guitar DIs, if you will. The built-in instrument input in good audio interfaces is usually very clean, but different DI boxes usually have of different analog colorizations that some people prefer. For example, I have the Radio JDI and it adds quite a bit of high mids to the guitar DIs. Some people might like that and some people might not. A good DI box can cost between $150 to $800 like the Avalon U5. From my experience, if you have a good interface, adding a good DI box is just icing on a cake. It adds maybe like 5% and the return on investment is pretty low. The most important thing is still the interface. A quick note about cables. You don't need to buy any premium cables, but don't buy the cheapest, sketchiest ones either. Just buy the ones that have a reasonable price. I have tried recording with Mogami cables and just regular cables. There is no difference. Save your money for something else. Now, I want to talk about how to optimize your guitar to get the best recording quality. To preface, this is more geared towards recording in the heavy genres, so some of the things might not be uh, uh, applicable to softer genres. To ensure your mixing engineer has good guitar DIs to work with, one of the best things you can do as the musician is to record with fresh strings. Many audio engineers, including myself, recommend using one pack of new strings per song when you are recording for an album. This is especially important for bass guitar because bass guitar strings age really quickly. There have been times when I was recording the bass with a musician for a long song with new strings. And at the end of the session, I could hear that the DI sounded duller compared to the ones recorded earlier in the session. Also, the strings will start to oxidize as soon as they are out of the sealed package. Even if you don't play them and you keep your guitar in your guitar case, the strings will still age. If you're paying us professionals to mix your music, this is a small extra expense that you should invest in so we have better source materials to work with. If you're DIYing your music because you can't afford a professional, getting new strings before you do the final recording is one of the easiest ways to make the uh, mixing easier for yourself. Another easy thing you can do to improve your guitar DI quality is to use painter's tape to tape over the strings just above the nut of the guitar, like this. So if I strum here, you can hear that there is no ringing. You also want to tape the area below the bridge if you have a fixed bridge, like this. This will eliminate unwanted ringing when you're playing the guitar, especially during chugs. It will just make your guitar DIs sound a whole lot cleaner. Painter's tapes are really weak and don't leave any residue, so you don't have to worry about the paint on your guitar getting damaged. Now, if you are recording with a guitar that has a Floyd Rose system, believe it or not, the springs inside the Floyd Rose do actually resonate with the strings and the resonances will get amplified especially in a high gain tone. So if you know you're just recording riffs, put painter's tapes on those springs as well so they don't vibrate. You should also be aware of resonances from the strings you aren't playing. For example, if you're playing a riff that only uses the bottom two strings, you should find a way to mute the other strings so they don't make any sounds. This is super common when you're recording with an engineer because we would just manually mute the unused strings for you with our hands. But if you're recording by yourself, you can always tape over the unused strings with painter's tapes. The point is, make sure they don't make noises because unwanted string resonances will really get amplified with a high gain tone and make your performance sound really messy, which will in turn make the mix sound clustered. If you are playing a riff or melody that doesn't use any open strings at all, I would highly recommend using a fret wrap or just a sock to mute all the strings so no strings can resonate and make any sounds when you are playing on the frets. You will want to put extra effort in eliminating unwanted string resonances for bass guitar because if you don't, you could end up with a super rumbly bass DI that will make the low end of your mix super messy. If you take care of all the unwanted string resonances, your DI recordings will sound extremely clean and whoever will mix your music will be so grateful for that. Now you might ask, James, this all seems to be so unnecessary. 
Well, no, it's not. Getting it right at the source is so important and attention to details goes a long way in audio production. When you put extra care in the recording process, the mixing engineer will be able to put all their focus on making your music sound as good as it can be rather than trying to deal with all the flaws in your recordings. The last thing I want to talk about is the performance. Your performance can arguably make the most difference compared to everything else I mentioned in this video. If you are stuck with a shitty interface, have no money for new strings, and somehow have no money to buy painter's tape, but your performance is impeccable, your recordings will still be better than if you have everything else but good uh, performance. There is a reason why all the amp sims that Ola England demoed end up sounding pretty much the same. That's because his playing techniques are absolutely exceptional. He can make any guitar and any amp or amp sim sound awesome because of his uh, amazing playing. For most metal music, even including prog, it is crucial that the two hard panned double tracked rhythm guitar tracks are in sync with one another. By in sync, I mean that both guitars are playing the notes on time, so the left guitar wouldn't be rushing or the right guitar wouldn't be lagging. If you listen to any metal records that were professionally done in the last like 40 years, you will notice that the left and right rhythm guitars are always almost perfectly in sync with each other. Like uh, if you listen to Metallica's Master of Puppets, the rhythm guitars are extremely in sync with one another. So are the rhythm guitars in the album as the Palaces Burn by Lamb of God or the Awake album by Dream Theater or the Gnosis EP by Monument. So this isn't about sounding natural or not or about if your music is supposed to be modern sounding or old school sounding. Having in sync rhythm guitars is just a huge pillar of a professional sounding metal record. When the rhythm guitars are in sync, they actually create a really wide stereo image in the mix, which not only makes the mix sound wider, but also makes it easy for other elements to sit in the mix. Let's hear an example. You can hear that the left guitar and the right guitar are super in sync and they sound super tight. If the rhythm guitars are not in sync, they often have a smearing effect on the stereo image and the entire mix will sound more messy. My advice is record section by section so you can easily focus on playing the notes clearly and on time. You should record a take, pan it to the left, then double track it and pan it to the right and then you listen to both of them in solo and panned left and right to hear if all the notes are in sync. This isn't cheating and this certainly doesn't mean you are not a good guitarist. This is just making sure you capture the best performance for your music. If you still can't understand it, just think about how you would dress up nicely if you know you're doing a fancy photo shoot. If you happen to have a pimple on your face, you would also want the photographer to Photoshop uh, Photoshop it out, right? It's, it's not cheating. You are just making sure what's being captured is your best look. So why wouldn't you do that to your music since it's going to be out there forever? If you nail all these things I mentioned so far, you are already at the top 1% of all musicians. The recordings you will get will be so amazing that you will have no trouble getting great guitar tones. And if you're working with a mixing engineer, they will absolutely love you for getting it so right at the source. I still remember when I received uh, the guitar DIs from this band I worked with years ago, I was just in shock by how tightly recorded the DIs were and it was so easy to create a great mix because of that. That's it for this video. Give it a like if you find it helpful and subscribe if you're into music production in the heavy genres. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.